So this is our Storm Eagle gunship and transport that we built out of a Storm Raven. So we took originally took the Storm Raven chassis. We extended it with some plastic card and then remounted the tail on the back, braced it on the inside, and then magnetized all the weapon options, moving the wings uh, to the proper location and adding a vengeance launcher on the back, which we will glue um, very shortly. Uh, so uh, if you were thinking about doing a conversion like this, I highly recommend it because a Storm Raven and some plastic card is definitely a lot cheaper than a Storm Eagle made out of resin. Um, so this is definitely 30K at 40K prices and um, gets you your own custom personal type model. Uh, if you like this, please stay tuned and we'll show you how we built it from scratch. And uh, if you find this video helpful or if you want to stay tuned for other future videos, feel free to leave a like on the channel, leave a like on the video and uh, leave a comment and stay tuned and we'll show you how we built this model. Cheers. So this is a project we've been looking forward to for a very long time. And what we're going to do is try to take this Storm Raven gunship and turn it into a Storm Eagle. So we've got our Storm Raven kit here. And what we're going to do is take out the key parts and try to build it into a Storm Eagle. So what we've done here is we've taken out the key parts of the ship. Uh, what we're looking for is the front end fuselage. The only difference between the uh, Storm Raven or Storm the Storm Raven and the Storm Eagle is about three inches model size. So what we have to do is we have to figure out a way to add three inches to this model. So what we're looking at here is a model that fits together like this. This being the front fuselage here, and these two pieces slide in amongst each other's there, where these runners fit into those spaces, similar to a Rhino, and you've got that set up. So what we need to do is extend this out another three inches from the top part, the side part, the bottom part, which is here. So extend out there, and then the other part as well. And that's going to create a square that won't be very stable, but then we'll use more stuff to brace it inside. So, so what we're going to use for this is some polystyrene. Um, also called plastic card. So this came from a modeling shop. So pretty straightforward, easy to find. Not a games workshop shop, but a, a train modeling shop, model railroad. Um, so we've got two inch ones and we've got our two millimeter ones and one millimeter one. So we're going to take the two millimeter one and we're going to start cutting it up um, to the parts we need. So effectively what we want to do is we want to take this part here, which we know is going to be the floor, and we're going to place it down, finding out the width that we need. We're going to mark it off, like so. Use our straight edge to measure it along so it's perfectly straight. And then we're going to score it, and then we're going to break it. And we're going to get a piece the right size here, which we're going to measure out to be three inches. So we'll do two of those, one for this piece, and then one for the uh, top here as well. They're the same size, so those two pieces should be pretty straightforward. So we'll do that now, and we'll be back here in a minute. So what we got now are these two pieces, which are the exact width we want but are also three inches long. So what we're going to do is glue these on to here to extend out this flooring and then glue the other one onto the top to extend out the, um, the, the ceiling. Now there's a hatch cut here, this little divot, and that's going to fit in there. So we, grab, we gauge that out a little bit. And we've also cut a little bit of a slant on this because that is going to match the top, which has a slant to it there. So those two are going to attach in there. So before we affix those, we're going to do the other hard part. Which are the side rails, because we want to extend this out 
But the other thing we want to do is we want to keep the shape because that track fits right in there like so. So we need this whole shape recreated further down the line. So what we're going to do is same thing because it raises up here. This is the new floor. So we only need we only need a model that's going to be this size. So that thickness there. What we're going to do is extend this to the end, trace the edge of this, and then extend that back all the way here. And then we'll have a piece that has a jagged piece out of the end of it. And then what we'll do with the other end of it is we're pretty much going to cut it flush and cut this groove out right here. And we'll lay it over the front of this piece. So we'll probably cut this this uh, raised area out and slide it over that if we can. Uh, we may cut it there and then add a little piece after. Not sure. Um, we'll play with it and we'll see what we end up with here in a few minutes. So what we eventually ended up with is this looking thing here. Uh, we've done two of them because once I did one I was pretty happy with it. So we just mirror imaged it and flipped it. And we've got two. Uh, not exactly what I wanted to do but it does fit over that groove leaving space for the door. Um, I did have to cut it flush, uh, so we could extend a little piece over that. We did manage to keep the, the other shape, so we can now put that piece there and then still have access to our doorway. And we've managed to extend this out about three inches. When I was cutting it, I balanced this all together so I could measure out, based on our, our original piece, how far that distance was. And then that's where I started cutting the inset. So these pieces were our jig. And then from there we used the edge of that to decide where to cut down. So what we effectively we got now is an extensor. For our ship. So what we're going to do is attempt to start gluing it all together here and extend these pieces out as well as glue the front cockpit together um, so that we can see what we've got in order to start putting some braces in. Um, so I'll get a video again when we've got another work in progress just to see what we're looking at here. So, so far this is where we've gotten so we've put in two uh, three out of four pieces together and what we ended up finding is as we put it together this last piece is just a hair bit too small so what we're going to do is i've built up some pieces inside to add more reinforcement and attach it better to the original model we're also going to glue the front of that and slide that in there as another brace and then it'll also stop stuff from getting lost when it falls in the back um, and then once that's braced in there, we'll put another cross brace here, one on the bottom, and we've cut a new um, bottom piece where we just basically measured it straight out, and that'll go over the top there, and we'll glue that in as well. So we'll keep working at this, but I want to take a minute to show you some of the reinforcements that we're doing so that this doesn't come apart on us, and it is the 2 millimeter thick one, so it's pretty sturdy to begin with. So we'll keep working at this and we'll be back here in a moment. So here's our model now that we've put the bottom on and we've also reinforced it inside. We've added a separator panel so now you can see it doesn't travel all the way down and into the main cabin. And so what we've got here is a an extended tail area. So now we're gonna go from here is we're gonna start looking at the wings. So the original wings it clipped on right here, like so, but the Storm Eagle has them set way back here. The way this kit is built, there's a groove underneath the wing, which takes this panel here, and creates this two-fold approach, which was connecting to the tail. But the tail we're going to move and rearrange anyway, so this piece is going to come off, we're going to cut that there, and we'll probably turn that into the front wing that goes here above the fender, above the uh, the vertical lifts. 
Then we'll keep the motor in place. We'll mount it there and we'll put some more plastic card braces over it to build up this height so that we can put our tail in place. Because as it sits now, you can either click it down like that, which isn't the best, we can click it up this way, but it leaves a gap. And so we'll build that up. And then we may or may not cut this off and use this as another wing. Because in effect, the Storm Eagle has one set of wings here. With a second set that comes over the top. Sort of like that. So we'll be looking at adding those two. So we're going to do a little bit of kit bashing here. Uh, but first of all, we're going to remove this wing here, build the engine component, minus the undercarriage weapon, which is this piece. Because I'm going to want to magnetize between the missiles and the LAS cannons that go in there. So we don't want to put that together until we've got magnets in place. So we'll do some of that now, meet back again, and we'll see where, how far we've gotten. So our model's coming along quite nicely now. Uh, we still haven't got to some of the parts, but what we did do was we mounted the wings, and then because it was a weak connection, because it used to glue into this um, lock key space, we built one out of plastic card and then put a second piece over the top, and then that hold, held both of them together. The original tail piece that was there, that used to go on the top of this, we split in two and they became the side wings. And then the original second wing that came off the back of the engine got split in two and they became the front wings. So as you can see now, we've got a uh, bit of a ship going. So. We're going to move on from there and we're going to magnetize those uh, weapons pods and we can put the bottom half of the wings and the launchers in place there. So we'll do that next. We're also going to try to find some pieces to put on here. We have to fill all of these seams with uh, putty just so they, they disappear as well as the one in the front here that we messed up a little bit with the glue. Um, we have a couple of caps from other vehicles, and that'll sit nicely on the roof right here. So I'll put that in place as well. And then we still have to magnetize the front piece with the um, alternating uh, heavy bolter or Meltas. So we'll do most of that and meet back here in another few minutes and we'll see how it goes. So this is our model now and what we did was we built the driver or the pilot then we started decorating the sides so we used the ammo box from a predator a few extra pieces we had lying around that piece from the tail a couple other pieces here we glued on the top um, hatch added another hatch because we had one lying around and so that's there we put together the wings and as you can see we magnetized the inside so we can add either a set of las cannons like so and all we did was magnetize two las cannons onto a piece of sprue and then your other choice was The vessel piece that's normally there, we just throw a magnet on the back side of that. And it snaps right inside there. So we can switch between missiles or LAS cannons as we want to. So what we're going to do now is we've got the hatch 
and the hatch has a glass in it. We're not going to put that in now because we're going to want to paint the, the pilot. So we'll leave it as that for priming as far as that goes. We uh, duplicated a couple of rocket launchers from a knight, which we can then mount onto the back as our uh, launchers. So that gives us our third weapon. And then the front mounting is either a set of multi melters which we've got here that just sort of pops right into place or it's a set of rockets that unfortunately uses the exact same piece and also snaps into place both of which sit comfortably under that front canopy. So we're going to figure out a way to kit bash some options and maybe drill a hole for a magnet and magnetize this section here. So we'll probably do that next just to get us our front weapon magnets. We're probably going to magnetize the doors only because there's a um, Storm bolters set up, uh, hurricane bolters that also fit in here. Um, and we may want to run this one day as um, as a Storm Talon as opposed to a Storm Eagle, in which case uh, we may want the extra bolters. So we will uh, mount those as well with magnets and see how that turns out. But the unit is almost finished as is. The other thing we did was we took an extra bottom piece here because that wasn't nearly centered enough to hold the model and we needed one a little bit further back. And even that's not going to hold it. So we could glue it, but we're not sure if we're going to do that just yet. But it is a flying unit, so it is there. May magnetize the stand too. Makes it easier to travel. In any case, we're going to keep working at this, and we'll meet back here again in a few minutes. So as we're still moving along here, we're going to work on the doors. So what we did here is we took a little piece of sprue right there as a line, as a brace, and then we added some... Um, some putty or some green stuff or whatever you happen to have for filler and then put a magnet in it uh, you can access it through the front door um, as you're going and then that lets you do some of the work inside there just to brace everything because what we want to do is because the doors for the storm eagle match the doors for the rhino we want to be able to take our you know alpha legion or other specific doors that we have there and we want to be able to put them on the jet depending on what we happen to be running that day. So if we're running rhinos, we'll put the doors on the rhino. If we're running storm eagles, we'll put the doors in the storm eagle. Just like so. So we'll take that back off there just so we don't mess up the magnet while we're waiting for everything to dry. So the other thing we're gonna work on is the nose cone. Uh, we have several different weapons to put on, so it started with a panel like this that could rotate and it would slide back and forth and it ran inside tracks that were underneath this piece here, but I've sheared off those tracks to make it smooth because what we want to do is have the ability to drop this piece in and out and then I've cut off the bottom piece as well, which it sat in this track right here because otherwise it'd be locked in place. So this was our limiting factor where it took the Meltas, it also took the rocket launcher, and then it also took the uh, heavy bolter. So we want to be able to spring those out separately. So we're going to mount this to that, and that will be piece one. And because there's a little hole there, we'll put a magnet in there. We drilled a hole in here. And we're going to drop a very small magnet in there, which fits perfectly. 
and the underside of that can be accessed through there. So we'll fill that with putty, drop the magnet or two inside just to um, hold it in place. And then from there we can swap pieces on and off. So this will be piece one that'll go in and out. And then we're gonna take the two Meltas and we're gonna find an equal computer type piece like this. We're gonna glue them together with the piece in between, magnetize it and that'll drop on and off as well. And everything will fit inside this cover here. So we've got quite a bit of space to play with for our design because the ship can take the Meltas, it can take an auto cannon and it can take um, heavy bolters. So we want to be able to have all those options depending on how much points we're playing with. So we'll set all that together there. And then if we hadn't mentioned it already, we drop the magnet in the wings right there. And we magnetize a piece of sprue with the LAS cannons and that drops right in place like so. Or we could use the missiles which also has a piece of uh, magnet on the bottom. We trimmed it a little so it fits inside just like so. And any and all of those weapons can be interlocked and interswitched depending on what we happen to be running that day. So we'll finish working on these nose cannons and then we'll be back hopefully with almost a finished job. So this is our final product and as you can see, it looks pretty good. We've definitely extended it back and <clears throat> it definitely looks like a Storm Eagle now. We had originally did uh, duplicated a couple of rocket launchers from the Knights, um, but I wasn't super solid on how they looked, and I thought the round motif didn't really match the rest of the jet. So, so what we did instead is we took the air fin that was originally behind the uh, turret on our Storm Talon, and we did rebuild it, and we put it in the back here, and then we took the set of rockets off of a different jet that are usually located down and around the front, mounted them to the side, as well as the uh, satellite dish from the Rhino. And then that'll give us our Vengeance Launcher instead. And I thought that appeared a bit more uh, fluent with the, with the jagged lines of the Imperial type ship, as opposed to the more rounded one of the launcher. Uh, the other difference was these are very, very heavy, and this is much lighter, which will help it stay on our flight stand. As far as weaponry, the uh, last cannons are all magnetized, as we had seen earlier, and they can be swapped out for launchers, like so. And our front Havoc launcher here is also magnetized. And it can be swapped out for either Meltas or Bolters. And I haven't built the Gatling Cannon yet, but they can be fixed in right like so. Um, so you get a, a fairly magnetized model. The doors can all be removed and replaced with um, Legion-specific doors. And we may or may not remove the uh, icon iconography on the front and on the wings and replace them with chaos or we may leave it and make it very versatile so i hope you enjoyed this build i, I found it particularly fun we did do it over several days so the lighting has probably changed in every video uh, but if you do find it interesting please feel free to give a like to the channel and um, leave a comment and we will see you on the next video that we do uh, which will probably be back to a painting video. I, I have a surplus of stuff. Uh, in any case, we will see you the next time, and you guys have a wonderful day.